Hello and welcome to my series on how to build your own cloud. I'm going to host this series for a few months until I end up documenting all I've been doing to build, run, manage and maintain my own cloud. This project is going to be very time consuming, but I feel that I should really retribute the internet for all I've learned. Basically everything I know came from the internet for free or very low price, so it would be good, correct and nice to give it back and maybe help someone take care of his or her own data and learning the process. Since I'm a young teenager, I host my own service to share files and things with my friends. Initially, I always started with, you know, just an FTP server sometimes even without any authentication and a HTTP server just listing the contents of the directories. But later on, uh, I started having dedicated computers for that. Uh, I started with an IBM Aptiva that I had win running Windows NT4 on it and that had an FTP server and HTTP server as well. It was a very nice passive cooled computer but the hard drive and the power supply made it quite no noisy. Then, years later, I got a Dell Dimension XPS T500 and it had Windows 2000 in it. I installed a SCSI controller and it had an 18 gigs hard drive together with the stock 18 gigs that came with it. Years later, I, I found a dual processor motherboard and I ended up upgrading it to a dual 500 megahertz uh, Pentium 3 processor that kept my revision, but the capacitors didn't survive very long. Years later, my first employer went bankrupt and I received as part of payment an IBM E-Server e X-Series 220 and it had a Pentium 3 toileting processor and of course it received more hard drives, extra RAM and was also running Windows 2000 for a while. Then I started having different priorities and basically the project was frozen for a while until I then moved abroad and started having a steady income then I started, you know, trying different things, gathering some ideas and slowly building one thing on top of the other until now I have my complete functional solution, mostly built from free open source components, with exceptions here and there that I'm going to explain and justify during this series. You may be asking yourself, why should you go through this and start hosting your own content and run your own file sharing server and other services? Well, since I'm a kid, I have computers and I've always had to be careful with my data. I lost all my songs weeks before Audio Galaxy went offline. I lost very interesting photos and videos because I didn't have enough space and no money to burn a CD or do a proper backup. I've made mistakes moving files here and there and lost six months of very precious photos. I've had issues with, I don't know, Apple Aperture uh, corrupting its database and me losing, with me losing photos and additions and corrections that I, have, I had done to them. I've lost files, documents, but since I started taking it very seriously and learning how things work, I haven't lost anything for many years and I also found different ways to share the files with my friends securely and be able to access them from wherever I am. It's also good to understand how things work what happens to your content when you put it in some cloud server or Amazon or Google or whatever company you use, Apple, iCloud. And in the end, 
you really learn a lot doing it. You learn how networks work, how computers work, how operating systems work, how the web works, how file sharing services work, and what other things that are behind. And that will help you professionally if you're an IT person. And if you're an end user, as we go, we're gonna learn a lot about your own computer and maybe save money with support and be more careful with the things you generate. Nowadays, people have all their photos there. You have a baby and then you take a picture of your baby for one whole year using your phone and in the end your phone dies and you have nothing, yeah? And in the past, as we were using uh, dedicated cameras for photo and video and printing them, we were safer. What is not cloud? People seem to be confused very often on what cloud really is. I have my personal opinion on that, on what cloud should be, but let's start with what cloud is not. Nowadays, you can buy easily some hard drives that have an internet port that you can connect to your home network and they provide you some kind of interface to remotely access your files and maybe even some client application for your mobile devices that you can use to upload your photos, uh, videos and, and backup your files automatically. That's really not cloud. Yes, it's remotely accessible and it's a remotely run service. So the brain of the thing is not on your device, but somewhere else. But it's a single point of failure. You are trusting all your data to that device. And uh, in case there is a fire, robbery, or that disk fails and you don't have a backup, everything is lost. I will also not consider cloud something that's run out of a single location. Even if you have a second server or third server, under the same roof. For example, let's look at this picture. You have your house and that's called in our drawing A. And on the other side, you have your house B or your friend's house or your office, doesn't matter. Now let's suppose B is out of the picture. Imagine now, now that you have your two, three or four or 20 servers running under this single location A and then everything dies. Let's suppose you have a small internet provider problem and you are traveling abroad. Then you cannot really access your data. It's still there, it's safe, but there is no connectivity, it's useless for you and you may need it. Let's also consider that maybe this location A catches fire and you lose all your data. You lose access to the service and the data is lost. And even if you have a backup, if the backup is under the same roof, it's going to be lost as well. A real cloud is not a water drop. A real cloud spreads the services through different locations or throughout different locations. So in case of issues, you can still run it. And in case of uh, a disaster, your data is there, safe and preferably preferably still reachable. So in our exercise, we are gonna always think from the perspective that yes, your data has to be available always and safe in any case.